So, uh, welcome once again. Uh, I'm working at the Jagiellonian uh, University in Krakow. So, Jagiellonian University probably uh you know where it's located because it's relatively close also it's relatively close to the border with uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia um, uh, for example we have a good uh, uh, relation not only with the universities from uh, Czech Republic but also from Slovakia from Bratislava uh, Nitra uh, uh, as well uh, Bajska Bystrica. Uh, so this is a natural influence that when we're doing something in Poland, uh, for example in Krakow, we try to learn something from the experts from the uh, Czech Republic or from Slovakia because we are the neighbors. Uh, I know that uh, also in, at your department you have an excellent researcher who are dealing with the topic which uh, I will try to present today. Uh, I'm thinking now about the uh, Dr. Uh, Michal Czerny, which is an uh, uh, incredible expert also in, uh, that, uh, in that field. Uh, so, uh, we are, I'm working at a really old university. It's more or less like a Charles uh, University in Prague. Uh, by the way, the first professor who got the job in uh, Krakow uh, obtained the diploma in Prague because uh, 20 years before uh, when the, our university has been established, your university exists. So the difference between Jagiellonian and Charles University is more or less 20, uh, 20 years. So uh, yeah, it's a big influence uh, in Czech uh, science to the, uh, my uh, university. Uh, I'm working at the Faculty of uh, Philosophy. Mm, so more or less like in your case, uh, but at our Faculty of Philosophy, uh, we have a few institutes, for example, Institute uh, of uh, Psychology is one of the biggest, one of the, uh, let's say, K institute at our faculty, because they have a lot of projects, a lot of laboratories and uh, a lot of research group. Uh, the, another one is Institute of Religious Studies, so if you are interested in what's going on with the GAT uh, or with the religion. Uh, yeah, we, we are welcome this kind of students. Another institute, uh, one of the, also one of the best is the Institute of Soci Sociology. Um, for example, uh, Piotr Stompka, uh, who is really pop popular also in the Czech Republic, it was one of the, our um, key person. Um, and also one of the smallest uh, institute uh, at our faculty is the Institute of Education. So only 40 academic, 40 academic teachers. And uh, we have a specialization like kindergarten education, special pedagogy, uh, adult education. So everything which is close to the formal education, it means school, regular school, and non-formal education when we're thinking about uh, supporting children with special kind of behavior problems, uh, also uh, seniors club, also a culture house. So formal and non-formal education is the two directions uh, where we are trying to preparing the staff and when we try to implement some research and to find something new and something useful for the practice. So, um, but I spent the, the, the last uh, two years uh, in uh, Italy uh, because I got some something like a Polish Fulbright. Uh, we have a lot of research grants, so if you are interested to do something in Poland and use the money from the Polish agency, uh, you should Google NAVA, NAVA, Narodowa Agencja Wymiany Akademickiej, and uh, we are open for the PhD students, uh, for the a a MA students. Of course, we have also SEPIUS uh, network uh, to um, invite colleagues from abroad, from Czech Republic, Slovak Slovakia, Visegrad Fund, which is uh, uh, really, really useful uh, for some small projects. But uh, back to the Italian issue. Today I will try to explain something about the digital literacy, about the digital skills, 
because it's one of the, uh, let's say, not only K competence, because we know that we have a K competence. Today I will try to, to, to explain why it's uh, extremely important uh, to keep in mind that K competence changing our life. Uh, but I will also try to share some research results how it looks like in another European countries. Uh, because we have in our minds that uh, Central Eastern Europe, uh, like for example Poland, uh, have a still more problems uh, with education, with digitalization, with in general quality of education than in other countries in Europe. Uh, it's a negative stereotype, but it's not true. When we collect the data and we have a strong data, we change our opinion that we are uh, quite uh, quite good. So, but um, what we're doing in, in, in general, we are the part of uh, UKIT's online network. I know that in Brno, you have also a strong research group, uh, Professor David Schmachel, who represents uh, this uh, group of over 33 countries uh, from, from, from around Europe. We try to diagnose uh, how the young people uh, using new technologies in positive way, so how they change the quality of life uh, due to the implementation of new technologies in their life, and also about the, the dark side of internet. Dark side means cyberbullying, um, digital piracy, uh, internet addiction, um, identity theft, so uh, everything what is not so positive. Uh, we are try every five or every six years to conduct the new research and compare uh, the results across the Europe uh, where we are, where the children have uh, the biggest rate of the negative behaviors and where uh, it's quite good situation. Now, to sum up, uh, everywhere the same problem with, let's say, for example, FOMO, nomophobia, uh, among others. Okay, uh, in the current project we have a one uh, quite quite good project uh, with total budget one, over one million euros with guys from the uh, Leven in, in Belgium and of course Finland because if you want to get a big money you should have partners from Finland. Positive stereotype everything. Uh, close to the education, it's the best in Finland, but we know that it's positive stereotype. Uh, we also implement the uh, colleagues and invite the colleagues from the London School of, of Economics uh, to uh, rethinking media literacy and digital skills in Europe, because still exist some groups which require a special kind of support when we're thinking about the effective use of, uh, using of new technologies. What kind of group? This is the, let's say, question at the beginning. For example, elderly. The, the, the rate, the level of digital exclusion in Central Eastern Europe is still uh, high. N not so high like, for example, 10 or 20 years ago, uh, but still high. Uh, of course, exist in other countries when the uh, level of digital exclusion is uh, worse, like Romania, uh, Bulgaria, um, Portugal, uh, where you compare the data, for example, from Eurostat. Uh, but we try to find what kind of factors uh, have a big influence uh, in the curricula. What we should change in the curricula when thinking about the formal and non-formal education, and how the teachers trainers should be more effective. If you are interested, uh, if you are interested in this field, uh, we have published a lot of uh, reports from the systematic analysis, for example, over a few thousand articles uh, about uh, uh, training, about the classes, uh, not only in school, but also outside of school uh, with adults, and we have analyzed every detail which factors have a big influence to be a, um, to create effective program uh, to uh, shape digital skills digital literacy so uh, it's really interesting now after the systematic analysis we implement uh, some solution in every country in Finland in Spain 
uh, in Poland, in UK, and to try to compare uh, how we, how it works or not uh, not, not 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 working now. Um, yeah. Mm, we know that because today the, the lecture, the, the meeting is about uh, digital literacy, digital skills, digital competence. We know that it's something uh, basic, uh, it's something natural. Of course, the Mark Prainsky uh, or another famous researchers like Jacek Pejalski from Poland. Or, Another one say that this um, divide for the two groups, digital autochthons, digital migrants, is not true because Pransky said that when someone was born in 1983 uh, and is younger, it's a digital uh, autochton and the digital skills, digital competence, it's something natural for this young group and the people who was born uh, before 1983, the digital migrants, and they use the new technologies in a different way, uh, more in an analog way. But now we know that linear, linear style of using is not true. Every group prefer the multitasking, of course, not elderly, but also in the elderly group, you will find the people who have uh, opened a lot of window, they listen to music, writing something, and it's not so complicated for, for them. Some some of theory about the digital literacy, about the style of using of new technology is not true. But we know that it's one of the uh, key competence. Uh, what kind of another key competence uh, we have when we're thinking about the education? Because I represent um, let's say expert <laughs> professor from the uh, educational field. We have, a, for example, uh, using the mother tongue, it's a key competence, mathematical skills is a um, key competence, entrepreneurship, so make a business, is it also a key competence, cultural awareness, it's also a key competence. So uh, be together, create a, a responsible society, it's, it's, it's also one of the key competence. So, mm, and digital and media uh, literacy skills as well. So we know if you don't have enough level of digital literacy, mm, your quality of life going down. But it's not so easy to, uh, to keep this uh, hypothesis because for example, you will find in your neighborhood some elderly uh, who are not using the, the, the ICT and they um, natural needs buy something, communicate with other, um, get the news. Uh, also, are uh, uh, realized in the offline sphere. So the quality of life not going really down because they not use the ICT. So it's a problematic, it's a more for the academic discussion uh, than uh, implement one in one in reality this, in this theory. But everyone knows that now if you want to get a good job, so uh, you, you need the ICT, you, you need the new technologies, you need the artificial intelligence more and more uh, when we're thinking about the current times. Uh, so digital literacy, digital skills is really required in the labor uh, market. When we're thinking about the traditional sector, what I mean when I'm thinking about the traditional sector, for example, education is really traditional sector. Also, uh, the teachers are more and more competent and they are more and more uh, using new technologies in, in didactical uh, and upbringing sphere. Uh, so this is a reason why, for example, at our university, we have a few special courses dedicated for the pre-service teachers, how to uh, implement new technologies in the, uh, to, to, to achieve the um, uh, lessons aims. So, so it's something natural. 
uh, of course, you represent that um, the, the, the field of ICT because your department have in the title uh, Informaticzny Komunikacyjny Technologie. So, so for you, it's something also natural that without it, this kind of skills, uh, it's not possible to, to change your life in a positive way, of course. I don't want to today say uh, because we have a coin. But ICT is like a coin. We have a positive side and also negative side. But today I will also only focus on the positive side. Um, of course, when we're thinking about the digital literacy, from my perspective, from the educational perspective, um, you will find a lot of definition what digital literacy, digital skills, digital competence are. So many, many articles, tons of articles. When you open some prestigious journals like uh, Education and Information Technologies, uh, Springer, Computers and Education, now they have uh, subtitles like Computers and Education, Artificial Intelligence, for example. Uh, you will find in many articles that digital skills, when they try to create some research about the attitudes, uh, about the change some behaviors due to the high or low level of some software or hardware. Uh, in this component, in the model attitude uh, TAM, technology acceptance model, or extended educational technology acceptance model, you will find digital skills is one of the main variable when we're thinking about the understand how we use the new technologies. So we try to also measure this digital literacy, digital skills. Uh, but we know that from my perspective, from the educational perspective, it's not simple to define the digital literacy as a click something, open something, run something. Uh, is a, let's say, not broad definition. Because if you have a smart monkey, monkey, animal, and you will train this monkey to click something, to open something, you will train this monkey if the monkey is smart, but the monkey will not understand how the new technology is changing our behavior. At the beginning of meeting, I said some key, uh, I say so, something about the uh, some negative aspect like a nomophobia, fabbing. Uh, this is a part of the internet addiction. Uh, yeah, we should also have a cognitive part of the digital skills. So it means reflection, how the understand how the media, new media, new technologies changing our behaviors. Uh, and some people from the uh, who represents, for example, uh, media researcher, uh, social science, but media researcher, they will say that this is a uh, media skills about the, to be uh, resistant when thinking about the fake news. Uh, to understand the manipulation, to understand what's going on on social network sites, that we are longer and longer to understand mechanisms, how new technology is changing our behavior. So there are mm, not defined this competence, these skills, this knowledge, this attitude as a digital literacy, but more uh, uh, like a media skills. So sometimes for many people, it's a synonym, digital literacy, media skills, digital competence. But when you analyze in detail uh, this issue, it's, 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 it's not a uh, synonym. But I will back once again to the basic definition for us, for guys from the educational sector. Digital literacy is click something, open something, run something, implement something, um, a services, software or similar solution. And the second component is understand how this solution changing our uh, behavior. So it's more complex. It's not so simple. Mm, OK, but we are going a little bit deeper. Uh, we are follow this definition of digital literacy or digital skills. And the, the, our reality is more complicated because, for example, when we're thinking about the different groups, here you, you will find on, on the picture uh, really small, small children and elderly 
elderly is also a problem to define elderly. Who is the elderly? Someone over 65, over 70, over 80. Uh, yeah, but maybe from the uh, retired age in Poland is someone over 65. Retired age is a board to be in the uh, um, the uh, adult or uh, elderly. Uh, so, but when you try to understand how these two different groups using the new technologies, you will find that they have a totally different. Uh, they are using internet as services and they are doing something else on internet and it's not easy to create for example one universal definition or one universal framework for these two groups when thinking about the digital literacy because because they have a different needs needs so uh, for example young children uh, mostly using new technologies for entertainment uh, when we thinking about the youth of course, communication, entertainment, uh, looking the information, um, communicate each other. Uh, yeah, it's something core, something base. But when we're thinking about the uh, elderly, they are, they are looking at totally different information. Uh, also close to their needs, but they're using different websites than the young people. They not play too much games. They're not using, using so often social network sites, but it's also changing. It depends on the people, because probably you also know a, a lot of elderly who are on Facebook or Insta, uh, using Twitter. Uh, and for them, it's not something really complicated. It, it's easy. Mm, but they have a totally different needs. And also, when we're thinking about the professions, and we try to create one universal framework of digital literacy, uh, digital skills. Each profession has a slightly different model of digital literacy. I don't know if it's not too easy to say something like that, but this, uh, let's say, this idea uh, have behind a practical uh, explanation. For example, when we're thinking about the people who are working uh, in ICT sector, are programmers who are creating a database, uh, creating web page, uh, who protect the computers, who create the whatever, who repair the computers, uh, uh, who create the something, um, something really, really advanced, they have a totally different uh, Style of thinking about the digital skills than, for example, teachers or elderly or young people. But we're still using the same terminology, digital skills, digital competence, um, to create a more um, messy situation. I will give another um, example. For example, please try to imagine that you have a two different group of teachers, for example. Uh, teachers who are working in kindergarten, so they have a status of teachers, and teachers who are working in high school or academia or university. So every every person who are in these two, three different groups, they are teachers, but uh, they need a totally different skills. Why? Because teachers in kindergarten not using so often new technologies. And of course, in many countries now, uh, we have a different style of thinking, by the way, uh, about the thinking of implementation of new technologies in education. So um, not only in France, but also uh, Italy changing the uh, day law. Uh, also in many schools in Poland, uh, they want to a ban and uh, not allowed to use for example smartphone in the smartphones in the school so yeah but back to the uh, different professions yeah we we should keep in mind that we use a different software uh, sometimes different didactical equipment uh, in different type of schools so it's 
also have a big influence when you're thinking about the create some universal core of K digital uh, skills. Uh, okay, in uh, in not only in the Polish literature, not only in the Czech or Slovak literature, you will find uh, you will find uh, a lot of examples when the experts, people who are dealing, who are creating the research about the new technologies in education, represent the two style, two different styles, uh, thinking about the how new technology is changing our life, our environment, our relation with the family, with the pupils, with peers, whatever. Uh, we have uh, people who are thinking that digital competence is the key, but we have uh, the opportunity paradigm and the risk paradigm. For example, the opportunity paradigm, when you, when you go really deep into the research results from the education, from the pedagogy, you find the people who try to implement a new solution, create a new software. For example, in one of our projects, uh, which has been titled uh, Smart Ecosystem for Learning and Inclusion, SELI, with people from uh, Turkey, from um, Finland, from Bolivia, Panama, Ecuador, uh, Brazil, uh, we have created a beautiful uh, e-learning platform uh, which support the children with disabilities. Uh, it was uh, just before the COVID time. We started in 2019 and we try after the preparation phase, after the theoretical phase, uh, we have tried to implement this e-learning platform uh, um, across European countries uh, and Latin American and Caribbean countries. And it was a funny situation because uh, at the beginning of the COVID time was 2000. Uh, it was four, over four years ago when the school, uh, when the lockdown came and school has been closed. We go to the school and offer and send the link and call to the teachers. Please, we have a beautiful e-learning platform. Uh, we were really positive uh, uh, because the platform was quite good. And the teachers said, oh, no. No, it's a beautiful solution, but you know we are overloaded by task. Uh, we have a problem with how to use Teams in the right way, and you offer something more advanced. So it was a big, big mess. So we use the style of thinking about the, from the opportunity paradigm that new technologies should and must change education in a positive way. That technology accelerate learning, accelerate teaching. Uh, giving the chance to um, share the ed educational materials in a simple and effective way, but it was not true in our case. And we start thinking what's going on with these teachers that they don't want to, of course, they were overlooked. True. But uh, another key issue was the attitudes. So, uh, what, how they how they, what are they thinking about the, in general about the new technologies? So, so it's also not true that everyone thinking in a positive way about the new technologies. This is the reason why I put here uh, on the slide uh, the risk paradigm. It means that uh, um, we, if we go deep into the research results, you will find a lot of researchers who are focused only on the dark side. They're thinking that new technology only change our life in a negative way. We are consume more and more content online. We are, for example, Manfred Spitzer said that uh, digital demands, we are dumb, more dumb, we are more stupid uh, than before um, ICT has been started really popular internet, uh, smartphones, or whatever. Uh, so we have a, in our sector, in pedagogy, two styles of thinking about the new technologies. And these two styles of thinking not merge uh, so often. So we have a, the opportunity paradigm, only positive thinking, and also the people are thinking only in a uh, negative way. Mm. It's interesting because uh, 
many many years ago uh, we had we have find some similar issue uh, but with colleagues from Czech Republic not from Brno but from Olomouc in Polish Olomunets Olomouc and uh, with guys for example like René Shotkowski uh, and his team uh, Kamil Kopetsky as well uh, we try to analyze how the teachers in Poland and in Czech Republic using it was many many years ago it was 2016 so it will be uh, near 10 years ago nine eight years ago uh, actually uh, so uh, we have find that we have uh, four uh, groups in general when we're thinking about the teachers in service teachers not pre-service teachers, but in service teachers. So active teachers in the school. We have techno optimists. So I don't know, maybe you are techno optimist because you are in the Cathedra Informatic Technologia. So you are techno optimist because you probably believe that ICT changing our life in a good way, not in a bad way. Uh, so the techno optimist, what's wh what are you doing in the school? They are looking information on internet about the new solutions, about the new websites, new software. They know everything about the quizzes, Padlet, Canva, Gamma app, whatever. They know everything about the, pop the, the most popular software and they try to implement as much as possible because they believe that new technology is changing skills in a good way. Um, around 20%, not more, not more, um, because we have a data from the 2021. Uh, it, we have used the one questionnaire uh, with this typology, techno-optimist, techno-pessimist, and I will include in the next minute two uh, uh, more group. And we find that in, in, in Poland, not more than 20 percent, um, but it's changing. It, 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 it depends where you will go with your questionnaire, to, to what kind of school uh, you will, in what kind of school uh, you will include this questionnaire. Uh, OK, techno pessimist, the second group. Techno pessimist, uh, uh, the majority of people who, teachers who represent this group, they are elderly, they are older than uh, digital, uh, digital uh, out of tones. Um, some of them represent the retired age. Uh, they not believe that we should use the new technology. They prefer analog didactical aims, analog forms of working. They prefer, um, uh, talking and talking and talking and writing, then problem-based learning, uh, digital storytelling, uh, uh, quizzes, uh, whatever. And they prefer in general analog solution and they have also a lot of worries about uh, uh, cyber aggression, uh, internet addiction. So they only thinking about the bad way uh, they are not open uh, about the new training and uh, they not believe that lifelong learning in that field can change something <laughs> in the school. Uh, yeah, but also the other teachers are techno optimists. It's not, I don't want to create a new stereotype that every teachers who are over 56 is techno pessimist, but it's because it's not true. Uh, it also depends on, on, on many factors. And we have a also third group, techno realists. Techno realists. It's interesting because techno realists knows very well when they may implement ICT and when it will be effective. So, in another words, they not overloading the didactical process by ICT. So they are really smart. And when they have a, in pedagogy, we have an aim. We, we create, we set the aim, for example, to learn something, to shape some new skill. 
to do something to create a new knowledge, new structure of skills. And sometimes they know that in that case will be really good to use this kind of software. For example, uh, what I'm doing with my students in Krakow, uh, some simple solution. We're creating a still now in this semester, we're creating small, short uh, videos. And some of my students, if the, the video is quite good, they upload the videos with something, with some instruction, with a short lecture. It's open educational resources. And for example, the technorealist knows that we have some open educational resources and we should use. We have some blended solutions. And in this case, it will be good to use it. So they not overload. And the last group, the most interesting group, um, my colleagues from Czech Republic, from Olomouc, say that it's, it's not a good to word, but I, I, I will say it. The last group is techno idiot. Sorry for that. I should not use it, but it's it's to talk. <laughs> uh, it's called quote. Uh, so this kind of group uh, thinking that they are good. So they have a good level of digital skills and they know everything about the new technologies and they know how to use it. But in practical, uh, when they try to implement something, it's not working very well. So today I will try to explain how it looks like from the data perspective. If you are interested about the, some comparison between uh, Finland and other countries, uh, uh, from Latin America, we have published uh, three books and uh, they are in the open access mode. So you are welcome to download and uh, read if you are interesting. But uh, one example, one example from, from our uh, research from uh, four years ago. Uh, between, I repeat, we use the one questionnaire and we translate from English to the national language about everything, about the style of using new technologies. But one question is really in, in, important because uh, here in the Central Eastern Europe, we have a really hard discussion about the, should we ban the new smartphones uh, on the school or or not? And uh, yeah, and I have a small, uh, uh, small graph from our previous research. For example, we should the mobile phones in school be prohibited? And uh, we have a typical um, scale uh, from the left side, the Likert scale from one to five, one permitted, five uh, forbidden. And uh, what is interesting, for example, Uruguay, probably you know where is Uruguay, it's a small country uh, between uh, Brazil and um, Argentina, uh, let's say Switzerland in Latin America, and <laughs> almost every teacher. Uh, put the answer, yes, we should use, it should be not prohibited, it should be allowed, it should be permitted. And for us, it was a question, why, why they were so techno-optimistic in Uruguay? And uh, for example, in Finland also, they were uh, really techno-optimistic. Uh, when, for example, teachers from Ecuador, Dominican Republic, they were more techno-pessimists. Uh, Poland, Turkey, more or less the same. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the data from the Czech Republic because the people from Czech uh, was were not included into this research, into this project. But we tried to understand what is behind this graph because we have, a, of course, when we have no data about something, we have opinion. So you will find a lot of experts who tell you that oh, we should not use the mobile phone because uh, more cyberbullying would exist between uh, the peers and they will, they will be more bullied, more depression uh, and blah, blah, blah. But this is only opinion. Without the data, it's only opinion. <laughs> uh, so uh, after carefully analysis, we have found that uh, in Uruguay, the teachers are really optimistic due to the Sable plan. 
it was a really hard to understand, but we go to many schools and we observe, we discuss more and more with the teachers and they share a beautiful experience. Uh, at the beginning of 90s uh, was an excellent idea, Nicolas Negroponte, uh, really famous researcher from, from the US, if I remember correctly. correctly. Nicolas Neg Negroponte created the idea that we should give every pupils around the world, uh, mostly in the poor countries, uh, cheap, uh, small computer. It should cost not over than 100 American dollars. Uh, of course, not only give the mm, small computer, but also put into this computer some useful software, and of course, educational, educational software. And this crazy idea has been implemented in many countries, including Uruguay. And, uh, but in Uruguay, it was um, something more co complex not only giving the computers for free uh, for children you know uruguay is like a, more or less like a australia some big cities and uh, uh, majority of the territory is a rural area so uh, some small schools when few people are going inside from time to time and the distance between cities uh, far montevideo uh, is the capital and the biggest city uh, and <laughs> to be honest uh, not too many big cities like here in Central East, Eastern Europe, because, for example, Jagrat Ostrava, close to Ostrava, Brno, close to, let's say, close to Brno, Prague. You understand that the distribution of the big and medium-sized cities is totally different than... So, they create also, um, put, include, create a beautiful network with fast internet. So the schools have internet and laptops for free, and they have started building over two de decades ago uh, e-learning system. So every resources, every book, every didactical aims, every movies, everything have been uploaded on the state uh, server, and it was for free for teachers, parents, pupils, almost for everyone. So the idea was really good. For example, when the COVID came to the Uruguay, they were ready to transform the uh, uh, meetings face-to-face uh, -face and transform into the digital sphere without any problem because they have been prepared by the many years how to use it uh, in the right way. So, uh, so this is the reason why they and of course, the government invests uh, quite high number of. I'm not sure that it's a really high number of money because we spend a lot. I think in Poland we spend uh, more money than uh, than than Uruguay uh, when we divide, of course, per capita uh, for the informatization. But it's not so effective like in Uruguay due to many reasons. But if you have a good habits. If you know how to use it, uh, you, you are more techno-optimistic and you don't have uh, too much worries to prohibit, for example, smartphone in the school. Why? Because smartphone is a quite good uh, computer uh, with the cam, uh, with the internet. You can record, you can share the data, you can install some educational software, you can scan QR code, uh, you can call. Uh, you can almost everything uh, with smartphones, so they have no worries to, uh, mm, and then they don't think only uh, by the prism of negative uh, issues. Okay, uh, we should go go ahead. Uh, I don't know how it looks like in uh, your discipline. If, for example, in a library science or uh, something similar. Uh, but in education, we have uh, uh, many theories about the uh, framework of digital and media literacy skills. So when you put, when you go, for example, into the academia.edu, uh, ResearchGate, uh, Google Scholar, Scopus, Web of Science, F EBSCO, 
And when you put some magical words like uh, key competence, digital skills, you'll find a lot of uh, theories, a lot of articles. Mm, the one of the most popular theory is TIPAC. TIPAC is mean technology, pedagogy, uh, content. Uh, so when we want to uh, implement something effective in education, we're of course mediated by the ICT. Uh, when the researchers start research or um, teachers start looking some theoretical background, uh, theoretical embedded day activities, they start from uh, TPAC, technology pedagogy content. Because technology technology have some possibilities, fast transfer, uh, video transfer, like now, uh, and. Okay, technology is the one of the most important factor. Without the technology, it's not possible to do uh, something uh, in media pedagogy. Mm, pedagogy, because we have a totally different mm, didactic when we're thinking about, the, for example, differences between the e-learning and blended learning. It's totally two different methodics of teaching and learning. Uh, also totally different, like m massive open uh, courses. Uh, pedagogy is totally different because the age, when we working with the children in the uh, beginning of the um, primary education, uh, we use, for example, Scratch, uh, we learn how to create an email, uh, and yeah, it's totally different style of working, different tempo, different, almost everything, different software. So the pedagogy, it means didactics didactics, how to be an effective teacher. And we have a content, of course, I have a totally different content now and different content when I'm working with the uh, in-service teachers. I have a privilege that from time to time um, I worked uh, and I'm still working uh, with the in-service teachers. For example, in my department, um, we used to be giving a, a lot of money to uh, educate in-service teachers and uh, not create the segregation model in the school. So we have a quite good inclusive model of education in Poland. And now a lot of teachers changing the uh, profession and also learn how to use, for example, artificial intelligence, how to use uh, uh, Canva, Padlet, or um, Gamma app, um, quizzes. Uh, Quizlet and many, many, many software uh, in the inclusive education. Uh, now we started a new big project also about the how to support a special teachers in special uh, schools and also in an inclusive model um, with the AI, how to create the effective didactical material tests, uh, some papers for the individual work for the pupils. Uh, so it's of course how to check if the people send you the uh, paper task uh, which has been prepared by the AI. Of course, the, the, the kind of plagiarism it's also an um, important part. But uh, back to the theory, we start from the TPAC, TPAC, and also Digicomp Edu. Uh, DICOMP EDU, uh, it's interesting because the uh, basis of the DICOMP EDU, yeah, you may check your level of digital skills, digital literacy, uh, probably you know very well the selfie tool, which has been uh, promoted, strongly promoted by the European Commission, selfie, selfie. Uh, so if you are interested to diagnose the level of your teacher's digital skills, uh, Decomp Edu based theory uh, was implemented in the uh, selfie selfie tool. UNESCO Netstick. So we put with the Professor Laura Fadelli from uh, from Italy and we, to the one um, to the one place this theoretical framework, and we have I have tried to, to find uh, and understand how in theories the digital skills digital competence has been defined. So, for example, in TPAC we have, a, as you know now, um, technology pedagogy content and Digicomp Edu have some definition what digital competence is, but they have a six levels of 
ICT uh, proficiency, six level, six uh, different level of advancement. So Digital Comp Edu based mostly on the self-assessment. So it's not typical uh, exam because when you want to measure something, and other, uh, let's say, key competences, like uh, how we are effective in the using of mother tongue, uh, or English will be excellent uh, example, mm, because, for example, if you want to get a certificate uh, and show someone uh, in your next place of work on when you apply to be a PhD student, or when you want to make the final exam from PhD, or when you want to go abroad and get a job, uh, it's nice to have a document like a talk or something similar. So from A1, A2, uh, to the B1, B2. In Poland, for example, the, our students, uh, per service teachers, should obtain the exam at Academia in the level of B2 and they finish the uh, cycle of study, they should be advanced in the B2 level, probably in Czech Republic, the same. And we have a C1, C2. Why I mention this kind of solution? Uh, um, due to the simple fact that the methodology of measurement, uh, another kind of key competences are quite clear. Because, for example, when we want to measure how we are effective of using English, um, yeah, we receive the tests uh, with the text and we read, we put something, some words, we mark something, and the evaluator will check uh, if we are good or not, how many percentage. Uh, so it's simple. But when we're thinking about the measure, measurement of digital skills, it's more messy. Um, why more messy? Because, for example, when you open a cell key web page and you try to measure your digital skills, you will not find any tasks, real tasks to solve something, to do something. You will find only self-evaluation. So what does it mean, self-evaluation? They ask you, uh, are you are good in Word? Are you are good in Excel? Uh, how often you do this, that? Uh, do you have a problem with protect something or something similar? So the question is, is it really good research tool to measure in that way? Or we should be more closer to, um, for example, uh, TELC tests. I will try to give the answer in the next uh, slide. But um, as you see, we have a, a lot of theoretical frameworks, but they are totally different. They have a different indicators to measure something, different methodology, and the majority of these tests are based on the self-evaluation. So now you should have a red light goes to you that it's not a real research, it's not a real measurement. Yeah, true. If you have this kind of reflection, you are right. Mm. The professor Aura Fedeli, uh, we have tried to understand how it looks like around the world. And I have invited over 20 research groups from around the world, from Latin America, from Asia, from Europe. And the problem the problem is the same. Uh, in this book published by Springer, um, we use the systematic analysis from the last two decades. Of course, we use the technology of Prisma. Um, in our analysis, we have implemented EBSCO, Web of Science, as you see. Uh, in every country, uh, we have not limitation only to the English language, but we try to put the local uh, articles from the local uh, journals or local reports financed by the ministry or some local governments. Mm, so the Polish and English language um, was a criterion in our systematic analysis. 
of course, the another criterion was that uh, included only reviewed articles or reviewed uh, research reports financed by the um, government and NGO as well. Uh, of course, in every country they repeat the same model, but they have used the local uh, resources to um, to get the knowledge how. Uh, what is the real level of preparation for using ICT in the schools among pre-service teachers? So I will show you briefly, really briefly, um, some data from Poland uh, from the last two decades. For example, first research. Fridge Modrzewski Academy is located it's private uh, university, university uh, in um, Poland. Uh, 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 that, uh, students, press service teachers, they create a sur survey questionnaire, self evaluation. Why self evaluation? I will explain later. Is the most popular technique. Of course, they, they have not checked, they haven't checked any um, psychometric properties. They put 10 dimension of digital literacy. Yeah. Mm, in small sample. Mm, another uh, uh, research, Vinyarczyk Wajocha, totally over 200 students, online diagnostic survey, also self evaluation, no psychometric properties, 10 main indicators, uh, grouped in terms of situation of hypothetical using of uh, new technologies in education. Um, theoretical framework was uh, various govern government documents, of course, no leading definition of digital skills. And in practice, it was looks like the majority of students rate the digital literacy in intermediate level. So if we asking about the, uh, how you are effective in Excel, they said, oh, somewhere in the middle. How you are effective in the using of the word, uh, editing of text, I'm quite good because I'm using really often Word or something similar. How you are effective in PowerPoint? Yeah, I use it very, very often, so I'm very effective. But they using only a few options, <laughs> everything in this software. Just the most popular, bold, uh, italic, uh, save file, create a table, or something like that. But it's only, I don't know, 1%, 2% of the possibility which offer this kind of software. Uh, but it was measured by the uh, auto evaluation. So they have not solved any practical test in PC lab. Uh, of course, in many, many research results, I have found the same situation. No one definition universal, they create the research question how they want. Uh, students uh, mostly rate their own competence quite good. So after the careful uh, analysis, I have found 10 mistakes. For example, inconsistency, inconsistency of theoretical frameworks. We have uh, too many frameworks, so it's good. But from the um, opposite side, it's a mess because too many theories which define the same create a big, big, big mess. Uh, it's not so easy to find the one universal uh, indicators, so uh, because you may overload your questionnaire. Uh, and also the mm, one dimensional measurement. Some of researchers are focused only on the positive aspects and some are focused on the negative aspects. They not to combine these two perspectives. Um, some of research tools were really with high level of subjectivity. Um, they use non-standardized tools. Uh, so no longitudinal studies, really small sample. So, but they published these articles. And some people and another researchers, when they look, okay, someone else used this methodology and published, but it's trash, it's not valuable research results because we really don't know what is the real level of the young teachers, press service teachers. So, uh, 
few years ago. I, I have published in few articles in MDPI. <laughs> now I try to not publish in this company, but it's a long story why. Um, but uh, if everyone try to measure in their own way, in their own style, uh, digital literacy, digital skills, I try to do the same in my own way. So, but I have decided to use not only self-evaluation questionnaire, but I implement ECDL, European Computer Skills Certificate. Probably you know very well this uh, substitute for it's let's say the same like we have a telc uh, in English skills measurement so in IT or let's say when we try to measure basic core um, proficiency of using new technologies we use ECDL it's quite um, more complicated than self not quite it's more complicated than, uh, than uh, for example, self-evaluation, because you need a real computer, real software, real PC lab, and the time to solve something is really limited, because every student gets 45 minutes to solve 32 tasks. So it's something like a small major exam in that field. Time limitation, uh, 32, some tasks are really easy, some are more advanced. Uh, so I have invited my students, uh, new beginners from the first uh, year of the bachelor, uh, to solve this simple test. And at the beginning, I have offered them self-evaluation test, of course, to ask at the beginning how you rate your digital skills. What are you thinking? Are good or not? Then, after the uh, simple verification, they go to the um, I have opened the um, questions for them. They have already a uh, folder uh, with the, um, uh, with some files and they operate and they make a practical tasks. Uh, but after 45 minutes, they should shut, shut down the computers and I have evaluate every test. And yeah, at the beginning, and I ask what is your level proficiency in Word or Word or other Word processor? Uh, yeah, eight point six. So add, okay, very high. Forty three percent uh, high. So majority said over um, fifty of a uh, half of respondents said, yeah, we are good or really good uh, in editing of text. Uh, when we're thinking about the PowerPoint, uh, also over 55, 54%. 54 uh, when we're thinking about the uh, about the Excel, yeah, they were really humble, so they declared that only 1.6% have a very high skills in the Excel, 17%. It was a self-evaluation, okay? It was the first step. And the second step was check the uh, real results. So 20% declare that, uh, not declare, but uh, they obtain over 70% of correctly solved task. So every fifth student pass the exam. But please believe me, it's quite simple. If you have a good IT teacher, uh, in high school, without any problem, they should solve this test, ECDL test. Probably you will find a mm, similar test in Czech language because it's typical, it's standard for 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 for, for, for this measure, measurement. But only 1.6 percent solve test from Excel. Those are really simple to. Calculate average to create the cross table to create a graph uh, to change something. So I, I was really curious why. So that after when I collect the data, uh, 
the first question was why they have a so low level of core digital skills and some hypotheses uh, came rise for example um, we don't have uh, too many qualified IT teachers in the high school because the salary in the high school in, in, in not only in Poland but also in another countries in our region is lower than in IT sector so the guys who are really good in IT will not choose the school because it's natural that they want to uh, do something in business to business form or they go to some big private companies and they work in and stay very well uh, and majority of teachers who are IT teachers in the in, in the schools they obtain some simple courses and simple for example over 180 uh, hours at uh, university they there are in majority cases teachers from the physics from the mathematics field uh, sometimes also from art <laughs> and all as well they are working as a uh, as a IT teachers but it's okay if they are really good uh, in that field why not um, another issue that Polish students uh, after when they obtain the high school they have only one hour per week only in the first class so they in total they have uh, 60 hours in the high school um, obligatory courses with ICT so it's not not too much and uh, another reason another issue we have a positive stereotype that this digital uh, out of tones have a really good level of digital skills but it's not true because it's limited only to entertainment so open the music send something find something funny use the social network sites but when we think thinking about the when i gave them some more complex um, more advanced tasks it's not easy for them to do something more advanced uh, majority of them have no knowledge and it's also here on the top of the slide you will find the spearman correlation co coefficient it's between the variables simple correlation between the variables and I have found, and I have found not only in this research results, but also in another, that when you are good in one field, it does not mean that you will be good in another field. So if you are good in editing te tests, editing of text, it's not true that you will be also good to create some calculation in the Excel. Uh, so it means that. Um, digital skills digital competence uh, is a more broad definition we should be really careful what we put into this definition because we have a create the databases create the web page among others so please be careful what you really thinking about the digital skills because it's differentiated by the age by the profession almost by the everything and if you are good in one field it doesn't mean that you will be good in another one another issue we also measure because uh, we don't have too many experts in the media education field so from time from time to time i'm invited to be a member uh, of the uh, research projects and one of the research projects few years ago has been uh, focused on the in-service teachers and the Ministry of Education want to create a program solution training program from the dedicated for the teachers. And also uh, and also um, support these teachers in, in using uh, new technologies. So uh, we have measured, for example, uh, uh, real level of uh, knowledge. Mm, about the credibility of information available online we gave them some tasks to solve some open questions some closed questions and we try to measure um, their knowledge uh, for example how they should protect the image on the internet uh, about the copyright law for, for, for example 
if they download some movie from internet, is it possible to um, show that movie uh, in the class? Or if they download some software from internet for free from Vares web page, uh, is it okay to install this software on the PC uh, and do something, of course, in a non-commercial use? And this is just an example how we measure some 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 issue. And please look here on the slide table one. Um, for example, they were they were really good in the field of cyberbullying, how to protect the teacher, how to understand mechanisms of cyberbullying, uh, how to protect some data uh, when, for example, children is cyberbullied by some by another pupil or by someone who is stranger. Uh, yeah, and they were really good in that field. But when thinking about the copyright, credibility of information, so they are they, they, they were not they haven't any haven't big resistance uh, for the manipulation on the internet, for example. So after the diagnosis, we created we have created a special kind of program which support uh, our teachers. And also, when we measure the indicators, uh, the knowledge between some factors from many fields, the correlation was really poor. So I will repeat once again: if you are good in one field, for example, if you are good in the in, uh, information low. It's not mean that uh, you also have a, a high knowledge from the field of uh, uh, cyberbullying, or you don't have a, a lot of knowledge about the how to protect uh, from the technical point of view to, to not be attacked uh, by the strangers. So it's really, really complex when we measure uh, digital literacy. And yeah, I, I should <laughs> I, I should go slowly to probably slowly to the end of this meeting of this lecture because it's quarter past um, five. Uh, but I have a lot of research, a lot of cases, a lot of uh, a situation uh, which uh, which is really valuable from the research perspective. Uh, so I will try to show you something interesting. In 2022, so it's, in, so it's two years ago, uh, I have measured um, digital competence per service teachers in Italy and Poland. Uh, it was quite a nice uh, sample of uh, 1,200 respondents, uh, more or less equal Italian in Poland. And in, yeah. And uh, in Italy, I have invited uh, uh, pre-service teachers from the north part, Bologna, uh, from the central Macerata, from the Sicily, uh, and also from the Sardine Islands, uh, Sardine Island. And um, after that, of course, in Poland uh, was also the, the sample differentiated from the north part, from the central Poznan, from the uh, south, uh, my university, pedagogical university, USB Academia. So to, to, to construct the sample um, more stratified. Uh, and of course, they received the theoretical test. And uh, also we have asked about style of using new technologies. I don't want to explain the detail of um, this research because a research tool uh, uh, in Polish version, Italian version, English version, are available on Academia and ResearchGate. So if you're interested, you may download it. And also the, the article, which now I'm presenting, is uh, available in open access mode in the Technology Knowledge and Learning Journal. So um, we asked about the frequency of using the most popular software in Italy and Poland. Uh, in Italy, the frequency was a little bit higher. Um, of course, from the statistical point uh, visible uh, because the P value uh, when they when we asking about the problem where they have a more problem problems with uh, uh, with uh, using the basic software in Poland they were more problematic uh, than in Italy we also asked about the many many issues and in the end we gave them the test, real test of knowledge. And what happened? 
uh, in Italy they received uh, lower, lower results from the test of knowledge than Polish students. So cultural background is also important when we measure uh, by the you know, self-evaluation. -eva so people who are more optimistic, maybe the nationality which have a more sun, and <laughs> they uh, thinking about this themselves in a better uh, way. Uh, but in reality, our students were more humble, but they received the better results. Mm. So be careful when you use self-evaluation. And um, cluster, uh, clustering, of course, it's, I, I really like this kind of uh, data, data analysis method because uh, I, I can group somehow the respondents and for example uh, and for example in Italy the pe people students per service teachers with higher level of digital skills uh, was represented by the 46 percent of the respondents and in Poland by the 61 so we're working with the young people who are digital natives but they are not homogenic some of them have a better attitudes towards new technology, have a better skills, they are using more often new technologies, but some of them, let's say they are more techno-pessimists, they are not every person from this group of group of young people are the same when I'm thinking about the style of using. So mm, this is one of the conclusions. We have also uh, gave, uh, yeah, I'll show you something. Uh, Maybe, maybe, maybe here. Okay. We asked also um, teachers and pre service teachers about the, um, how often they use some popular edtech, educational technology software. And for example, quizzes is more popular in Poland than in Italy. But in, but in Italy, Padlet is more popular than among Polish uh, students. Wokelet, not popular in Italy and in Poland. And Jamboard, more popular in Italy. Uh, Wordwall, more popular in Poland. Prezi, more popular in Poland than in Italy. Uh, learning apps, uh, in Poland, more popular. Kahoot, in Poland, more popular. So uh, we asked about these uh, pre-service teachers and uh, in-service teachers if you are interested. So it's also uh, visible that the correlation was not so strong between the software. If you use one software, it does not mean that you will use another software also um, really often. Um, in general, to sum up, um, we have a different model of education in Europe, um, different model of education, teacher's education. For example, in Italy, in, at many universities, you will find that they have not separated courses about the media education, about the implementation of ICT uh, in classes. Um, they have a crazy idea, for example, in Macerata, for me it's crazy, I don't explain why, but probably you feel it, that um, they change the responsibility into the academic teachers. They not have a separated courses, but the academic teachers who conduct the classes, for example, introduction to sociology or introduction to philosophy, when they conducting the lecture or giving the exercise, they are obligated to use some educational software. And in the meantime, show how to implement it in the right way. So every academic teacher uh, should do this, show how to use it in the general courses or specific courses, I don't know, from the kindergarten education. They have not separated courses like in Poland. The second model is like in Poland, that for example, we have a 30 uh, hours introduction to ICT, 30 hours media education, and uh, now over 70 hours, uh, hours uh, for example, methodics of using of uh, ICT in education. So in general, when you are kindergarten uh, teacher and you obtain my university, you have a training of uh, 130 uh, hours in your whole cycle. Uh, so I think it's quite good results. 
And I, I think the most valuable model is the third model, when the t academic teachers so show something, and also we have a separated, uh, separated uh, courses. If you are interested how it looks like, what we should put into the uh, digital competence curricula, I have published in August uh, one article about this issue. I have asked the experts from the 33 countries around the world uh, what should be included into the, let's say, universal curricula to create smart, modern, wise teachers. Uh, it's in an open access mode. Um, also, uh, in this research, I have invited, um, I, I gave the question about the how we should how we should uh, shape the digital literacy on this group. I have invited from Spain, Slovakia, Australia, Serbia, Norway, Cyprus, Spain, almost from every, everywhere. Um, uh, so, but we don't have a time to, uh, to, to, to show these results. So if you are interested, uh, maybe I will share the presentation or maybe I will share uh, some links. What we are doing, uh, what we are doing now to sum up, briefly uh, now we still uh, try to measure to, to find the effective tools to, to, to measure digital literacy um, my classes are really practical oriented so i not only show the software please look we have for example uh, prezi we have a padlet uh, we have a chat gpt no we try to find some didactical aims in curricula and transform these didactical aims into the real practical tasks. So when our students, when our abiturients, pre-service teachers are go to school, I have a feeling that they are ready to use ICT in an effective uh, way. Uh, we also uh, now to try to change the trend, not to be a passive uh, receivers of information on the internet, but also active creators. Because majority of our students only consume the information. They have a lot of worries to create something new. Uh, in our new research, uh, important field is also digital hygiene. So to um, limit the using of new technologies, to understand that time screen uh, is really close to our well-being. Uh, so we try to measure how the problematic use of internet are changing now. Uh, mostly focus uh, on smartphone. So many, many projects, many research, many special issues, many books, uh, many everything. If you are, if you have a good um, uh, research results, or if you are interesting to share your research results, every year I organize the conference New Media Pedagogy. It's indexed uh, uh, on Scopus Web of Science and also uh, the, the, the books after the conference uh, uh, has been printed two times by Springer. Um, so if you are ready to share your idea, your research results, you are also invited to the online conference. You, you are not obligated to come to Krakow. Of course, if you want to come to Krakow, you are welcome. <laughs> but the conference uh, is conducting online, free of charge. Of course, we check if the... Um, uh, abstract submissions are in line with our scope, but in general, every uh, good idea to share uh, in that field are um, warmly welcome. So, thank you for your attention. I hope that my lecture was a uh, little bit useful for, for you. Thank you for the invitation. I really like to cooperate with uh, the neighborhood from the Czech Republic. Moc děkuji za pozvánku ještě jedenkrát. So, if you have some questions, I'm open for the discussion.